If you enjoy the content on this channel, please like and subscribe. The Long Shadow is a seven-part British true crime drama television series written by George Kay and directed by Lewis Arnold. The series details the five-year manhunt for the serial killer Peter Sutcliffe, commonly referred to as the Yorkshire Ripper. The series began airing on ITV1 on the 25th of September 2023. Screenwriter George Kay used the Michael Bilton 2003 book Wicked Beyond Belief combined with case files, interview transcripts and police reports to pen the series. Filming took place in Yorkshire in June and July of 2022, while filming locations including Wardley Leeds, Drewsbury, York, and a residential property on Langford Lane in Burley and Wharfdale, near Ilkley. Just a bit of background on the real Peter Sutcliffe. Peter Sutcliffe, who was born June 2, 1946, and died on the 13th of November 2020, was also known as Peter Coonan, was an English serial killer who was convicted of murdering 13 women and attempting to murder seven others between 1975 and 1980. He was dubbed in the press reports as the Yorkshire Ripper, an allusion to the Victorian serial killer, Jack the Ripper. He was sentenced to 20 concurrent sentences of life imprisonment, which were converted to a whole life order in 2010. Two of Sutcliffe's murders took place in Manchester, all the others were in West Yorkshire. Criminal psychologist Dr. David Holmes characterized Sutcliffe as being extremely callous and a sexual sadistic serial killer. Sutcliffe initially attacked women and girls in residential areas but appears to have shifted his focus to red light districts because he was attracted by the vulnerability of prostitutes and the perceived ambivalent attitude of police to prostitute safety. After his arrest in Sheffield by South Yorkshire Police for driving with false number plates in January 1981, he was transferred to the custody of the West Yorkshire Police who questioned him about the killings. Sutcliffe confessed to being the perpetrator saying that the voice of God had sent him on a mission to kill prostitutes. At his trial, he pleaded not guilty to murder on the grounds of diminished responsibility. He was convicted of murder on a majority verdict. Following his conviction, Sutcliffe began using his mother's maiden name of Coonan. The search for Sutcliffe was one of the largest and most expensive manhunts in British history. West Yorkshire police faced heavy and sustained criticism for their failure to catch him, despite having interviewed him nine times in the course of a five-year investigation. Owing to its sensational nature of the case, police handled an exceptional amount of information, some of it misleading including hoax correspondence purporting to be from the Ripper. Following Sutcliffe's conviction, the government ordered a review of investigation conducted by Inspector Constable Lawrence Byford, known as the Byford Report. The findings were made fully public in 2006 and confirmed the validity of the criticism of the force. The report led to changes to investigative procedures that were adopted across UK police forces. Since his conviction, Sutcliffe has been linked to a number of other unsolved murders and attacks. Sutcliffe was transferred from prison to Broadmoor Hospital in March of 1984 after being diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. The High Court dismissed an appeal by Sutcliffe in 2010, confirming that he would serve a whole life order and never be released from custody. In August 2016, it was ruled that he was mentally fit to be returned to prison. He was transferred that month to HM Prison Franklin in the County Durham. Sutcliffe died in hospital from diabetes-related complications while in prison custody in 2020 at the age of 74. Some interesting trivia notes. Peter Sutcliffe was among others what the police call a person of interest and a potential suspect from 1977 when a five-pound note found on a victim was traced back to his wage packet and was questioned a total of nine times by detectives. In 1975's Britain, when prostitutes were charging five pounds, the average wage for manual work was around one pound an hour, depending on age. DCS Dennis Hoban, played by Toby Jones, had two sons not shown in the series. They both recalled him often being absent on Christmas Day, having gone into the office, as depicted in episode 1. He was eventually replaced as the lead detective and died at just the age of 52 from diabetes complications in 1978, not living to see Sutcliffe's capture. Now this is an incredibly well-made, yet disturbing drama, based of course on the real-life investigation of how they eventually caught the notorious and cruel serial killer Peter Sutcliffe. The show now really focuses on the women, specifically the living woman, and where they've gone and what they have left behind. I enjoy shows that focus not primarily on the actual serial killer, but rather on the actual victims and the people who were damaged by this man's hideous crimes. Too often we are now of course very focused on the actual serial killer. Why did he do it? How did he do it? What kind of state of mind was he in? And we tend to forget the victim's stories, what they went through, what loss they suffered, how their lives were taken away from them too early, and how it affected their loved ones that they left behind. This show also concentrates a lot on the poor policing of the time by the West Yorkshire Police. I mean, the mere fact that they interviewed Peter Sutcliffe nine times and never picked up that he had any link to the murders is just quite astounding. 
The show highlights the misogyny of the 1970s and the racism that led this male-dominated institution down the wrong paths all the time. If the police had just taken a step back, listened to each one of the victim's stories and actually followed the evidence, they could have caught Peter Sutcliffe a lot earlier. Of course, it's easy to say these things in hindsight, but all the evidence was leading right towards him. And through the stigma, of course, of handing deaths of prostitutes, not listening to some victims because either they were seen as just mere prostitutes who had no real say or they were black, meant the police kept chasing their tails, never getting any closer to Sutcliffe. Also, the wild goose chase they were sent on when some man with a Geordie accent sent in a tape where he pretended to be the so-called Yorkshire Ripper meant that the police were chasing their tails once more, looking in all the wrong places, telling actual victims of the Yorkshire Ripper, well, if he didn't have that type of accent, it couldn't have been him. All in all, as a show, it's fantastic, but the story is very frustrating, as you realise that these women were not only victims towards the serial killer Peter Sutcliffe, but victims of, of the poor policing as well. They were not only let down by their government, but by their own very communities. This is truly a haunting, sad and frustrating tale of one man's murderous rampage and how he could have been stopped so much earlier if the police had just followed the clues. The acting performances here are absolutely superb and the cast is too big to mention, but of course the standouts have to be Toby Jones and David Morrissey. This is a superb show, not only if you're fascinated in serial killers, but in their victims as well, in a real life story about how women were killed, attacked, not because they were prostitutes, but because they were seen as vulnerable victims by Peter Sutcliffe. This is a very well-made, honest, heartbreaking and very important show that not only highlights the enormity of the racism and misogyny of the 1970s Britain and how prostitutes were seen as second-class citizens, but also highlights the violence and fear of one man's rampage and the inability of the police to do anything about it. The Long Shadow gets a 9.5 out of 10.